a humorist, a best-selling author, a successful entrepreneur, a doting father of three. Delano is building the team that will lead all things FraserNet into the future. Now Delano A. Johnson will tell you about our future. Thank you so much, Dr. Fraser. I am so grateful and humbled for this opportunity just to be first around you and to learn from your wisdom. And then of course, to be entrusted with such an enormous and important task to do for our people. Now, for all of our power networkers who have logged on and logged in, for you who have been faithful to this brand and our training and wealth building initiatives for over 19 years, we will continue to connect, to grow, and to prosper for the purpose of learning, earning, and returning to our people. To Madam Vice President Alexandra Johnson Boone, to our Secretary of State, Dr. Ron Daniel, our Chief Legal Advisor, Nana Dr. Kwa David Whitaker, and to our Board Advisors, to Linda Clemens, who is also the behind-the-scenes producer of this global virtual conference, to Randall Pinkett, who is the Chairman of the Board for FraserNet, uh, Dr. Joel Martin, and to Dr. Emma Fraser Pendleton. We thank you for your advice and your guidance. To all our visitors, our citizens, and our diplomats of Fraser Nation, I thank you all for this opportunity to speak to you on the subject of tomorrow and our succession. Let me begin first with a quote from King T'Chaka, talking to his son, King T'Challa, who was a little bit nervous about taking the throne. This is the visitation of the ancestor scene for Black Panther, the Marvel blockbuster movie. And King T'Challa says to his son, a king who does not prepare his children for his death has failed as a father. This is precisely why I admire and respect Dr. George C. Fraser so much for his leadership and for his modeling through action and his reorganization of resources we thank him because it is the responsibility of all leader to prepare those for when he's not here. Mansa Musa said it this way. He said, it is the accountability of a king to accomplish these three things. Number one, strive to be better. Number two, groom your successor. And number three, to leave life with nothing else left to be done. Now, between you and I, I don't ever think Dr. Fraser would ever have nothing left to be done. <laughs> now, surely we understand the journey ahead, but we are not there yet. We have not arrived and we cannot do this alone. Because of the life and the death and the hard work of our ancestors and God's faithfulness to his people, we can see over the wall towards the future simply because we are standing on the shoulders of our ancestors and many others who had come before us those like martin luther king jr who whose dream was to bring economic inclusion to his people but we are not there yet on May 25th of this year, the whole world watched as another one of our own brothers was horizontally lynched by another officer who was sworn to serve and protect. And then in broad daylight, we see another shooting, a senseless shooting, and the killing of our beloved Breonna Taylor. This tragedy should have never happened. As a result, our succession plan captures the spirit of the civil rights who responded to the same killings and injustice of the people then as is now. So we use that as a reference and fight not just for civil rights, but for our gold rights. Because for the last 19 years in our environment, we've been successful at creating this environment for black professionals, black entrepreneurs and those to grow and to prosper and to connect with opportunities. And this, my friends, is the most important skill to manage a life of financial freedom. And that is our core competency. All of our subsidiaries, all of our companies are designed to assist with this single goal in mind. See, we believe it is imperative 
that as a people, while we fight for our parents' and our forefathers' riches that is due to them, we must also prepare ourselves simultaneously to be able to financially manage large sums of monies. The economist Robert Brown stated that the ultimate goal of reparations should be to restore the black community to the economic position it would have if it had not been subjected to slavery and discrimination. Now, he estimated a fair reparation value of approximately $14.7 trillion. And this is to include all 48 million of the descendants of these enslaved Africans currently living in America. This would mean that every black person you know in America one morning would wake up and have $308,000 in their bank to do as they see please. Now, this is where we come in. This is where we, Fraser Nation, Fraser Net, a power networking conference, is most valuable because we can prepare our people to be ultimately responsible and capable to build and maintain Black Wall Streets all over the globe. That's the purpose of Operation Breed. Now, as the title of this conference goes, Fraser Nation has committed to making this just and reasonable cause a reality for our people. Now, such a campaign we will need in excess of over $280 million and a time length between 10 and 20 years to actualize this plan. Or in other words, to move the needle far enough so that our children's children aren't struggling like we did. Now, Operation Breathe is not a mega brand to consume ownership. We are not trying to build a mega brand of solutions for blacks around the world. Instead, what we are building in this operation, in this plan, is we understand that it takes a village to raise a child. So it must take a nation to raise a community out of poverty. We are instead an open arms, modular plan, ideal for strategic alliances that allows the right NGOs, the right GOs, the right nonprofit organizations, the right for-profit or B Corp organizations to forge a creative collaboration that will help us succeed today while we secure the success of our children tomorrow. To do this, it will take an extraordinary reach, a network that spans the globe. And Dr. George C. Fraser, for over 30 years, has built an alliance of like-minded people who see black exceptionalism as our only course of action. We have a global reach and influence of over 1.2 million black professionals and entrepreneurs from either government or private sector within their country, starting with Canada where we have over 150,000 people within our network. In North America, where there is 30,000, within the Bahamas and the Caribbean islands, we have another 10,000. And in South America, there is 1,000 blacks, professionals who are willing to make a difference and a change. Within Africa, we have 250,000 people within our network. We are positioned for our success and yours with brothers and sisters who are doing it all over the globe. You just don't know who they are or where they are, but we do. Now, this plan, this Operation Breathe is divided into four phases that focuses on our core competencies and is expressed in four campaigns. Campaign number one is going to focus on the George Floyd police reform campaign. Now, Fraser Nation has already helped to establish a new groundbreaking domestic violence law in the state of Ohio. We will establish and use our resources to ensure that the Floyd's law, the Floyd's act is passed. That will include police reform and accountability and personal responsibility of the police officer responsible for the death of another civilian. Phase number two, 
A global political action committee. Nothing gets done unless policies are written. So we will provide a policy model design for black self-determination that will help push laws and policies to support blacks to accomplish on a legal platform that which we have established on a mental, social, financial, and educational level. And these will happen through our programs and our global collaboration with our friends and our strategic partners. Phase number three, our business development and economic inclusion phase. We endeavor to build a first home buying program to promote home ownership and real estate ownership within our communities. The plan also calls for building or partnering with a capital and funding initiative portfolio that includes, among others, a national bank and a credit union of cryptocurrencies. And phase number four, our social re-engineering via film, entertainment, and media. For far too long, we've allowed our self-imagery to be projected by projectors that we did not own. We were not pressing the buttons. We did not even have a stake in. Once and for all, we will seek out our brothers and our sisters of influence within those industries, within radio and publishing and those who are social media influences. And we will impress upon them to join us and to write and to curate and publish and display and circulate images and video and content that project who we are and where we came from. And more importantly, how the future looks when we all participate in it. We will reward those artists who support these initiatives. And we will frown upon those who continue to accept bribes and publish pictures and imagery and videos and content that does not represent who we are as a people. Finally, understand that this road ahead is not and will not be an easy one. But it will be made manageable by the participation of not just some, but most of us. I know that we are not there yet. It has been difficult to self-actualize. I know this. It has been difficult to see your vision come to fruition. It has been difficult to find the funding for your million dollar idea. And we get this and we understand that hardship. We agree with you that it is not your fault entirely. And because of this, we are sick and tired of waiting for someone to help us. Oprah, thank you so much because you've started that conversation with the brand visuals and visual clues. Now we need to turn on our own oxygen for our own financial inclusion in America, Africa, and around the globe. I understand that it is hard to breathe while a manager is pimping your talents and supplying you with a drug called fame to pacify your common sense. I understand that it is hard to breathe. It is hard to breathe when your Caucasian co-worker who knows less than you makes more than you. It is hard to breathe. It is hard to breathe because every time when you come up for air, systemic oppression pushes your head back down beneath the water. I understand that it is hard for us to breathe, even when we're wearing a mask that's designed to protect us from COVID. It is hard for us to breathe. And that is why we are putting out a clarion call for clean and pure oxygen from content makers and intellectuals and inventors and teachers and professionals, all those of color around the globe to join us. We need your gifts, your talents, and your ideas. Finally, we simply ask as an action item. Now, perhaps you don't believe in prayer, and maybe you've never even prayed in your entire life. Well, my brother or my sister, now perhaps you've never prayed before, you don't even believe in prayer, but I will say this to you that I would like for you to consider that it will take something beyond our natural ability, something we've not done yet, and that is unify in prayer as a people. With the help of our ancestors and God, 
we can overcome and we can make this right. We ask that you go to onephrasenation.com and sign up today. All fees has been waived for you until the end of this year. And finally, we ask that you focus on self-improvement. Be committed to increasing your financial IQ, your emotional IQ, and your spiritual IQ. It is true, my brothers and sisters, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities that is trying to kill not just us, but our children. But this too will pass and we will get through this. We are not there yet, but we will arrive together. And finally, just finally, we will all be able to exhale and simply breathe. Thank you so much, Dr. Frazier, for your vision. Thank you, Delano, for sharing the future of Power Networking and Frazier Nation. We're excited about where we're going, the state of our nation, and what we will be able to do in the years moving forward. Now, it's customary in our FrazierNet Power Networking Conference experience, we do a DNA African Ancestry Reveal every single year with Dr. Gina Page, founder of AfricanAncestry.com. This is so exciting. And each time we hear the reveal of another one of our brothers and sisters, it just reminds us of the power of the work we're doing, how we're giving credit to our ancestors by how we live now. I know I was excited to find out I'm from Guinea Bissau, the Balanta tribe. So now we're gonna find out where Dr. Dennis Kimbrough originates in the motherland. Take it away, Dr. Gina Page. Hi, Dr. Kimbrough, it's, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Miss Gina, I am doing well. It's always great to see you. Thank you, thank you so much. So I'm excited, I, we're here so that I can I reveal the results of your African Ancestry Matcha Clan test. <laughs> but before we do that, I wanted to give you some background on what you actually did. This is our first time talking about the technology. And so I just want you and everyone who's watching to be informed so you're not wondering, well, how did, how did we get here? So I'm going to share my screen and then um, we'll dive right into a few slides. Great. Okay, so, you know, Dr. Kimbrough, as Black people, life is, for us is, is like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. A 500 piece puzzle, get all the way to the end and there'll be one piece missing. I know that has happened to me. I don't know if it's happened to you, but it's a very frustrating experience when you get to the end of something and you can't complete it. Exactly. And that's our experience when we start to think about our identities. When, and that's because we're the original victims of identity theft. When we were taken from the shores of Western Central Africa and brought to the Americas, we lost everything. We lost our names, we lost our languages, we lost the freedom to honor our ancestors, our families were torn apart. And so I believe that tracing ancestry is an ancestral imperative for us. Our ancestors want us to be connected to who we are. And they left all of the instructions on the walls of the temples and the tombs in ancient Kemet. We're part of a continuum. So we could, we could go back thousands of years and look at ancient Kemet as Tony Browder teaches us every year during the Power Networking Conference. But there was the later a migration out of Kemet and populations moved into West Africa and formed all of these magnificent empires that we descend from, the, the Mali Empire, the Songhai Empire, uh, so many different empires that we could be a Khan Empire. And then we had this 400 year period on our continuum, which was the period of slavery in the Americas. And unfortunately, as you well know, that's all we ever learn about. We don't learn about, for the most part, the, the empires that we come from, all the greatness, the fact that everything we do and know today stems from African teachings and experiences. So we came through that 401 year period now to end up where we are today, having had uh, the first black president, but also we're experiencing uh, unprecedented levels of 
social injustice, uh, as evidenced by many, including Breonna Taylor. And so for me, um, we have to do this work because if we don't get rooted in who we are, which starts with knowing where we're from, then we get batted around by anything society throws at us. And one could argue that that's why we're in the position we're in today. So if you don't know your name, there's thousands of languages spoken across the continent of Africa. If you can't speak your language, if you can't talk to your ancestors because you simply don't know who they are, and if you can't connect to your family members, because as you know, Dr. Kimbrough, during the period of slavery, which was a business, <laughs> a very well orchestrated, highly efficient, highly profitable business, mothers and fathers were sold apart. Parents and children were sold apart. Brothers and sisters were sold apart. You can't know who you are. And that's the position we're in when we, when we look at our family trees today. You can do some genealogy research, but most of us can't get past um, the late 1800s if we get that far. But the good news is that we did not lose our DNA. We have the same exact DNA as our maternal foremothers and our paternal forefathers, and we can unlock the code of that DNA. Now, when we're talking about identity, because this is identity work, I wanted to make sure that you understood or understand the African ancestry identity. Who are we? We are the pioneers of genetic ancestry tracing for black people around the world, period. Prior to 2003, there was no company that could do this work. And even the mainstream companies that you see today were not in existence in 2003. We are uniquely committed to transforming the way black people view, we, be, we view ourselves and the way we view Africa. We've chosen to do that through DNA, and we are the only company that can tell you the present day African country and ethnic group or tribe that you share ancestry with. So there will be no talk of percentages. There will be no talk of a whole bunch of different places in the world, basically just telling you that you're African. We're gonna drill down specifically. I know this is something near and dear to your heart. We are a, a black owned company. We are woman led. We have a black staff. We're the only company that has black scientists. All of, as many of our partners and suppliers as possible are black. So uh, supporting black business and recycling our dollars is a fundamental tenant or value of AfricanAncestry.com. And then finally, we're the only company that does not sell or share our customers' personal or genetic information. So now that I have your results, your DNA has been destroyed. I will not be doing anything else with your DNA than what we were charged with doing here today. Wow, impressive. <laughs> Thank you. We have two products. One is a matriclan test, which traces a maternal lineage. And that's the test that you took, Dr. Kimbrough. So that is going to give us the ancestry of your mother's 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 line going back 500 to 2,000 years. Wow. We also have, and, and we gave you that test because there is a 92% chance that the result will be African. I cannot guarantee that it's African because none of us as descendants of the slave trade is 100% African. It just, it just is a fact, no matter whether you look like Wesley Snipes or Mariah Carey. We all have some European ancestry, but that's not the question we're answering. The question we're answering is where were my people before Georgia, before New York, before Haiti, before Cuba, before Brazil? That's where we wanna drill down to. We also sell a test called the Patroclan test. That test traces a paternal lineage, father to father to father to father for the same 2000 year time period. Now, I did not give you that test because there's only a 65% chance that the result will come back African. 5% chance that it'll be European. We're at Power Networking. We're AfricanAncestry.com. 
I wanted to skew our chances of getting an African result because that's what you're interested in. Yeah. So I did not give you, uh, we did not send you that test, but I do want to explain to you briefly how the science works. Uh, we each inherit 50% of our DNA from our mother and 50% from our father. So if your mother's yellow and your father's blue, then what color are you going to be? Green. So I'm green, you're green. Let me stop here and ask you, do you have siblings? Dr. Yes. Kimbrough? Well, uh, yeah, I have some, but transition. My uh, older brother, he was uh, a year and a half older than me, and he made his transition about five years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have one brother? One brother. Okay, great. So um, we're all green. Everybody watching us right now is green, but we each have a yellow dot, a little bit of DNA that we inherited from our mother that did not turn green. It did not mix with anything we got from our father. That's called mitochondrial DNA. By definition, mitochondrial DNA is maternally inherited. So you and your brother got it from your mother. She and her brothers and sisters got it from your grandmother. She and her brothers and sisters got it from your great grandmother and so on and so on. So for hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years, that yellow dot doesn't change. You have the exact same yellow dot, the exact same mitochondrial DNA as your foremothers did. Doesn't matter who anybody else in the family is. Not, does, we're not concerned with anybody on your father's side. We're not concerned with anybody on your mother's father's side. We're just looking at that yellow continuum. Do you see that? Yep. Okay. So. What happens is Dr. Kittles, who is my uh, business partner and co-founded the company, he takes your yellow dot and he looks for matching yellow dots among people elsewhere in the world. When he finds a match, you have to share the same maternal ancestry because the yellow dot didn't change. What makes us unique is that we have the largest collection of yellow dots in Africa, or African yellow dots in the world. We have over 33,000 indigenous African maternal lineages and paternal lineages. The ma we have data from 40 countries, but the majority of our data is found in West and Central Africa, as you can see from the distribution on this map. And that's intentional because we know that before those New Orleans and Alabama and all of the Caribbean countries, et cetera, we were on the West Coast of Africa. We were in West and Central Africa. If we go back 100,000 years, then everybody comes from East Africa. But again, we're asking a specific question. Does this make sense to you? No, more than, more than enough sense. Yep. Okay, perfect. So um, the, the process is very similar on the paternal side. Uh, but I didn't want to get into that here because we're focused on your mother's 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 line. So we did find an African result for your ancestry. I'm curious as to whether or not you have any ideas about where that maternal ancestor was. Someplace West Africa. That's it, huh? That's like most of us, you know, that's all we know is West Africa. Yeah. Well, the country that you share ancestry with is actually a tiny, it's one of the smallest uh, African countries on the continent. Uh, it is a tropical country that was part of the Mali Empire uh, until or during the 16th century. It was then colonized by the Portuguese during the scramble for Africa. And um, you gonna show me the, the, you gonna show me a picture of it? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> you wanna you wanna get to it, huh? So um, it's actually a, a because it's a small country and because of the history of how it was colonized, uh, it has several challenges today. And I thought I'd bring up some of the economic challenges given uh, your area of expertise. So some of the economic goals for the country are to. Um, improve the climate for private investment, as well as to diversify the economy. Right now, the major export coming out of 
this country is cashews. Uh, and it's actually the sixth largest producer of cashews in the world, wow. which is incredible given uh, its, its time and space. So you share maternal ancestry with people living in the country of Guinea-Bissau today. Wow. Yeah. Guinea-Bissau is where that little purple purple country is. I put the red star there. You can see that it's yep. wedged in between um, Senegal to its north yep. and uh, Guinea to its south. Now, the people that you share ancestry with actually are, are a pastoral, no, no, blah, excuse me, a pastoral nomadic people who historically have crossed the Sahel. And these countries are what basically made make up the Sahel region of Africa. They were traders. And so the idea of business is not at all far from your maternal DNA. Now, the group that you share ancestry with is the Fulani people. Wow. And as you may know, there are Fulani people in many other countries yeah. in Africa. However, because of the extensive nature of our African lineage database, we have Fulani samples from Cameroon, from Nigeria, from Mali, from Guinea, from Senegal. But you matched with those who live in Guinea-Bissau today. Now, a few facts about the Fulani. As I told you, they are uh, herders. They are nomadic herders. And so they historically have moved across uh, Africa, trading uh, their wares as they go. But also uh, the Fulani are known, their women are known for their beauty. And I, you know, I, even though you're not a woman, you come from a woman. And so I think this is very important that you understand that the Fulani women are considered among the most beautiful women in Africa. The Fulani as a group are a huge group. The majority of them are found in Nigeria. Guinea-Bissau actually has the smallest uh, portion of Fulani across the continent. But within Guinea-Bissau, the Fulani are the largest uh, part of the population. They are primarily with the catalyzation of Islam across West Africa. You know, if you think back to that map of the Sahel. And so um, you come from a very long lineage of people. Uh, and I, I wanna make sure that you understand that you have Fulani DNA in your body. There is someone walking around in Guinea-Bissau today who shares your exact mitochondrial DNA. We can't tell you their name because we collected their information anonymously as well, but we can tell you how they identify and where they live. And now you have the opportunity as part of the African ancestry family to explore that ancestry, explore the traditions and the practices and the beliefs, uh, the cultural uh, activities that the Fulani and that others in Guinea-Bissau uh, participate in to honor that woman, that ancestor who made it through a terrifying, horrific experience to land here in what we now call the United States and made it through everything that, sh that we've experienced over the past 400 years so that you, and I know you have daughters, correct? So that you and your daughters can thrive and, and survive. And so I want to welcome you to the African Ancestry family, a community of over a million people, including many in the Power Networking family, who now know where they are from and are well positioned to explore who they will become. I, that's amazing. I am, I am speechless. I am. Wow. I mean, it's, it's one thing to give facts and a frame of reference in terms of Africa and our heritage and our rich legacy. 
but to know you as an individual, where you emanate and what was your starting point is humbling. Mm -hmm. That, and like I wrote in one of my books, somebody survived for you. Exactly. Man, Gina, unbelievable. Un so congratulations. Unbelievable. I'm so happy to have you as part of the family. I um, can't even catch my breath. <laughs> we're, uh, we're cousins of sorts. I, I share maternal ancestry also with the Fulani, but my Fulani legacy leads me back to Nigeria. So next time I see you, I'll give you a big cousin hug. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So and, you will be and Gina, you? you're you're giving me a DNA. You're teaching me about my history. And like I tell my students all the time, from kindergarten to PhD, I never had a black instructor in my life. Mm. And here I am, finally, someone is teaching me who I am, where I come from, what is my legacy what those who've gone before me have done. And like I said, to really wrap a bow on this, somebody survived for me. Yes. Oh, my God. So you will be Bonnie, receiving. The Empire, the Sahel. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. You will, will be receiving. I will never, ever take a cashew for granted the rest of my life. I don't even know if I'm going to eat a cashew anymore, man. I'm going to just hold on to it, just hold it right here and say, no, we ain't opening this bag. You're going to get some potato chips. <laughs> got to eat them to support the economy. So eat, eat even yeah. more now. Now you got to eat yeah. even more. But what I want you to know is that um, a copy of your entire results package has been emailed to you. So please wow. be sure to check your email. Sometimes our email.